today I'll show you how to add patterns to clothing in Affinity Photo. Let's get started. If you'd like to follow along, I've left a download link in the video description for all of the photos that I'll be using. The first thing we need to do is bring the pattern that we'll be using into this file. So I'll go up to the top of the screen to File, and then I'll go down to where it says Place. Now I'll select the pattern and open that up. And with that loaded into my cursor, all I need to do is click and drag to add this to our photo. To make sure that I like the placement and I'm covering the shirt fully, I'm just going to lower the opacity of this pattern layer, and I'll go ahead and lower that halfway. Now I can make this a little larger so I cover this whole sleeve over here. All right, and then I can adjust how it's placed. And I think that looks pretty good. So right now, the pattern is pretty flat. I want to liquefy it and mold it so it fits the shirt a little bit better and looks more natural. And to do this, we can apply a liquefy filter to this pattern layer. So let's go down to our filters, and then we can go ahead and apply the liquefy filter. I'm going to turn off Show Mesh. The mesh is just these little squares here. I find them a little bit distracting. And now we can go in with this default tool and move this around to make it mold to the shirt better. So to start, I'm just going to move it inward, smushing it into the sides of her shirt a little bit. But you don't want to take it too far where you can see the shirt again. So if that happens, just press Command or Control Z on your keyboard to undo that. So I really am just going all around all of the edges and bringing it inward. This will bunch up the pattern and make it look more natural. So I've gone around all of the edges, but there are a few other areas that I want to adjust. So in the shirt, there's a bit of a wrinkle right here, and I'm just going to move this in a little bit. Just so the pattern mimics that wrinkle. There's also a few more wrinkles up here in the arm. So I'm going to move this inward, going back and forth like this on either side of these wrinkles, and I'll do the same over here on her other arm. Again, make sure to watch your edges, make sure nothing gets too close to them. Okay, and I think this looks pretty good, so I'll go ahead and press Done. Now, the great thing about applying the Liquify filter is that you can always go back and click right here and continue to adjust this if you need to later on. Okay, at this point, I want to raise the opacity of this pattern again. So I'll select its layer, and I'll raise it all the way back to 100. Then I'm going to turn off this pattern layer so I can see the shirt. To make it so this pattern only appears on the shirt, we need to make a selection of the shirt. So I'll grab the selection brush, and I'll make sure Snap to Edges and Soft Edges is turned on. Then I'll use the bracket keys on my keyboard, I just want a larger brush for this. And then I can begin painting. But you might run into a little problem. You see how there's like a straight line right here, it's not snapping to the shirt? Well, that's because I have the pattern layer selected, so make sure you have this layer that has the shirt on it selected. I'll deselect with Command or Control D, and now we can begin again and it should snap to the shirt. Now there are a couple of little problem areas, so I'll lower the size of my paintbrush with the bracket keys. And then we want to make sure that this area is selected, and this area, and this area right up here on the collar. If you ever select too much, and I think I did right here, hold down Alt or Option on your keyboard and then click to remove from your selection. Okay, so we've selected the shirt, and now here's where it gets a little bit tricky. Go ahead and turn the pattern layer back on, then select it, and then come down here and apply a mask. 
Because we had the shirt selected, the pattern is now only appearing where our selection was, which is where the shirt was. I'll deselect with Command or Control D. And now I just want to quickly show you what a difference the Liquify mask makes. As I turn this off, you can see how this pattern looks very flat across the shirt, but with our liquefying, it looks a little bit more contoured to the curves of the shirt. Now, this is looking pretty good so far, but we still have a bit more work to do. The next thing I want to do is let's select the pattern layer again, and then let's change the blend mode so it blends into the shirt beneath it. The blend mode I want to use for this is called Multiply. Notice how Multiply is starting to bring out some of the wrinkles in the shirt. You can see we have quite a big wrinkle right here, and right here. And with this new blend mode on, you're starting to see those wrinkles again. So what we need to do now is we need to bring back the shadows and highlights that are on the shirt underneath it. Let's start with the highlights. To do this, let's first load this as a selection. To do that, hold down Command or Control and click on this layer icon right here. This will load the shirt back up as a selection. Then I'm going to come down here to the original layer and I'm going to duplicate it with Command or Control J. What this has done is it's duplicated this layer, but it's only kept the shirt. You can see that as I turn the other layers off. I'll deselect with Command or Control D. So with this duplicated shirt, I'm going to move it to the very top of our layer stack. And then I want to only keep the highlights from this layer so they overlay on top of the pattern. So to do that, I'm going to use a luminosity mask. Come down to our masks and then apply a luminosity range mask. And then because I want the highlights visible, I'll keep the highlights lighter up. And on the shadow side, I'm going to lower this and then bring it over to the right side. The more we bring it over, the more of the shirt will be revealed. I'm going to bring it over quite a bit. I just want to see the highlights, so I think about here looks pretty good. And now we can see the before and after. I'll turn this layer off and on. Okay, we're going to do a very similar process to get the shadows back, but this time we can save ourselves some trouble by just duplicating this layer. I'll press Command or Control J to do that. Then I'll select this luminosity mask layer, and this time I want to keep the shadows of the shirt, so I'll lower the highlight side and bring it over. I think that looks pretty good for now, but as you can see, there isn't a huge difference with this. In fact, it kind of looks like nothing happened. The reason for this is the original shirt didn't have very strong shadows, but that's okay, we can do a little bit more work to bring back some of the shadows by using a levels adjustment. I'll go to our adjustments and apply levels. So that this levels adjustment only affects the shadows on the shirt, I need to make sure it's been placed as a child layer to the shadow layer, but I also want to make sure this is placed underneath our luminosity range mask. Now I can go ahead and increase this slider. And as you can see, we're starting to darken up those shadows. I don't want them too dark, so I think I'll only place it about there. But you can really start to see some of those shadows being brought back. I'll close out of this, and then I think I want to do one last thing. I want to apply a blend mode to this top shadow layer, so let's go into the blend modes, and I'm going to apply Multiply to it. What this is doing is it's taking care of a few of these grayish areas where the shadows are. So you can see now it looks a little bit darker and more intense. But now that I've done that, I think this all looks a little bit too intense. So with that background layer selected, I'm just going to lower the opacity of the shadow layer. All right, and here's the before and after of adding in those shadows. I really like how it looks, especially right here by the sleeve. Before it just looked so flat, and now it looks nice and dark and natural. Okay, as a finishing touch to the shirt, I want to make the whole shirt a little bit darker, so I'm going to do that with a curves adjustment. There it is. <laughs> I'm going to make this darker, 
and as you can see, it's made the whole picture darker. So I'm just going to apply this as a child layer to the pattern. All right, and now you can see what that looks like. I think making it darker like this looks really nice. It adds contrast to the pattern. Now, you might be thinking at this point that the shirt is starting to look a little bit silky and shiny. If that's not quite the look you're going for, there are ways to make this look a little bit more matte. And to do that, all you really need to do is go to the highlights layer and lower the opacity of that. All right, after all that work, I'm just going to select all of these layers we have on top. And now you can see the before and the after. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.